Godzilla and King Kong return to theaters this week with Godzilla X Kong The New Empire. This is the fifth installment in the brand new MonsterVerse when it just comes down to movies. If you include Monarch, the television show, which is highly excellent, I highly recommend you check it out. That would also be like six things in the MonsterVerse. That will not be included in this ranking. We're just going to be talking about the movies. But do know if you have not watched Monarch yet, I highly recommend it. Today we're just going to be running down from the original Godzilla film from Gareth Edwards all the way up until Godzilla. X Kong the New Empire. I'm excited to do this ranking because overall I really like the MonsterVerse. I think it's fun. I think each film is kind of like a pocket of a nice little love letter to Godzilla, King Kong, the Titans, Kaijus, and all sorts of things like that. So it's going to be fun to dive into this. Make sure to leave your thoughts down below, hit that like and subscribe button, and let's dive into this. And coming in last place, we have Kong Skull Island, a film that I quite enjoy. It's kind of one that I was not warmed up to it originally but it's kind of one that over time I've started to enjoy it more and more specifically of what they've tried to do with the movie but when it comes down to these rankings when I do a Marvel ranking a director ranking a Star Wars ranking it doesn't matter anytime I do a ranking it usually comes down to rewatchability that is my biggest factor and emotion now, when it comes down to the MonsterVerse, there's, there's not really much emotion to go down into this universe. So we look at rewatchability. And this is the movie that I've probably rewatched the least amount of times. A lot of the reason being, I don't care at all for any of the characters. I watched this as like a fun Saturday morning cartoon with a bunch of people getting killed by other titans on Skull Island. And I think the idea of having Skull Island be the entire focus, this is your introduction to a baby King Kong, even though eventually we know that he grows to be even bigger. And all those elements, it's fun. I think Tom Hiddleston's really good in the role. I think what Voight Roberts does in this movie is truly phenomenal in terms of visuals. And that's one thing you can give to all the MonsterVerse movies is the director's sensibility of visuals and in this movie the visuals like paint it like its time frame but as well as like I mentioned that Saturday morning cartoon they do a lot of unique aspects and a lot of unique visuals that you don't see at all in the rest of this franchise and it's one that kind of caught me off guard while again the characters are completely forgettable there are absolutely every action moment in here will be memorable. I always think back to the moment when Tom Hiddleston is just flashing through and hitting all those giants flying things with all the smoke and the green effects. It's, it's pretty badass. Of course, Kong himself is the main attraction here. And when you want to make a fearsome Kong, that is what you get here and I really enjoy Kong Sky Island. Some people will probably have this one a little bit higher up on their list, but for me, I really like what they did with the movie. It's one that I can go back and rewatch, but it's not one that I choose to go back and rewatch all too often. Which brings me into my number four, and that is Gareth Edwards' Godzilla. Now, let me say right now, I know a lot of people will probably have this one way higher up on their list. I love Gareth Edwards as a director, but I've only truly loved one of his movies, and it was The Creator last year. That was the first movie where I actually felt the emotion of the story that he was trying to tell, and it's been the one thing that's kind of kept me at arm's length from a lot of his movies. And Godzilla, just like Kong Sky Island, another movie that overall I have taken my time to appreciate and really like. And every time I've gone back to rewatch it, which I always have this urge like once a year to rewatch it now, is appreciation. Liking more and more of what Gareth Edwards as a director does here. And specifically, as the monster verse has gone on, the one thing that I really have gone back and enjoyed my time with within this movie is how he shoots to scale, scaling Godzilla and making him this gigantic, unstoppable monster of force. And if we're looking at Godzilla minus one, this is the closest film to probably compare from the MonsterVerse, mostly because it doesn't take itself too silly, and it actually does try to tell a dramatic story, a father and son story, a family story, and at the same time, spinkled all in there, a Godzilla story. And making Godzilla this monstrositous monster, and of course the other titans that kind of come into the bout, which Godzilla absolutely just goes ham on, and I think a lot of people, when they initially saw this, were disappointed that like Godzilla doesn't show up to like the first 55 minutes. And it's disappointing for all those different reasons. And that's what people were expecting was Godzilla to start fighting people. I think when people went into this movie, they were expecting Godzilla to slam the shit out of other Titans, beat the crap out of them all, win the war, do whatever possible and whatever the nature of it was. And 
That's not what this movie was. It wanted to tell a more dramatic story with Godzilla in the background, but Godzilla still getting that limelight. And I think overall, again, Gareth Edwards does do a good job on that. I didn't personally care about the family, but I appreciate more about what Gareth has tried to do with this movie. And I think specifically looking at the MonsterVerse movie, I've mentioned every pocket of this, every time a director's tackled something in this universe, it's their love letter to Toho and what Godzilla was created back in the day. So... Godzilla 2014, a good movie, a movie that I quite enjoy, impressive visual effects. I love the scale, the way that Godzilla is shot. I still think it's some of the best visionary achievements of that, and I really love the final act within its fight scene. But besides that, again, not one that if you ask me out of these five, which ones would I rewatch, this wouldn't be at the top of the bunch. Which gets me down to my number three, and that's Godzilla vs. Kong. Now, this is just an entire UFC fun fight fest for what you may deserve and decide on. And I think Godzilla vs. Kong, for that reason, is just the blast. It sold a fight between the two biggest and baddest kaijus of all time, and you get that exactly in this movie. That's what the movie delivered, even with more surprises such with Mecha Godzilla showing up to wreck ham and kick some ass as well, which again just goes down to the whole evolutionary cycle of, yeah, this is what we wanted. And what Adam Wingard decided to do was take all of his Godzilla and King Kong toys and all the different titans and whatnot and throw them into one sandbox and have them duel. But again, this one is more focused on Godzilla versus King Kong, and for me, it's a blast. Now, I think this is the one that started to teeter and find that nice balance of human and kaiju battles. We'll talk about that a little bit more. I don't think a lot of these films have actually been able to find that to a certain extent, at least in this universe. But this is the first film that kind of started to go that route and show, okay, we can do a little bit more of the kaijus and not steer away from showing them fight. And, and I love that because each and every one of the fight sequences in here are excellent, like beyond belief. I love Godzilla fighting Kong and specifically the multiple fights that we do get with them. Each and every one of them is just visually pleasing. I love the boat fight, even though King Kong, it was like absolutely like impossible for him to win in that situation. And then even like the giant city, like the way that they lit up Godzilla visually looks aesthetically pleasing. I love the visuals on that and how Adam Wingard lit up again Godzilla and then gave King Kong the damn axe and then axe and all those sorts of things. And then it leads into the final battle with Mecha Godzilla, which... I mean, hear me out, like, some people don't like how weird and sci-fi this film gets, but it got weird, and they really much made a Mecha Godzilla realistically in this movie, and I personally never thought they would actually do one in this era of, like, filmmaking, but they did, and while it was incredibly silly and stupid, it was awesome at the same time. And I absolutely love what Godzilla vs. Kong was able to deliver on that. Showing the two baddest titans fight throughout, and then for them to team up and take down their extinction. And it, it's pleasing, it's awesome. I don't know what else you want me to say. But now we get down to my number two, and it is Godzilla x Kong The New Empire. A movie that... I didn't have the biggest expectations for. I just, again, expected another fun, crowd-pleasing. We're going to see them team up because that's the only other option and avenue that you can really go into this. And I was actually incredibly happy to say, this film rocks. It's glorious. It's the War of the Monsters live-action film I've always wanted. And it's one that actually really surprised me. There's a couple things that actually surprised me. First off, uh, King Kong is the main character of this entire film. I really think that there is more runtime with Kong than there is the actual human characters. And I actually was impressed that Adam Wingard said, trust me, if we can follow Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, Caesar and Planet of the Apes and all that stuff through an entire film and not really focus on the humans, and you can do the same thing with King Kong. And they do it in a silent protagonist type of style. Where at one point in the story, you see him, like Kratos, straight up, with the axe, with the gray stubble, going through this entire hollow earth with the little baby Kong, which we saw from the trailer. And you see him doing this, and you see him taking down a serpent, but it's just them and him learning about this new area of hollow earth that he's never seen before. And like, from visual storytelling, you start to see their relationship bond. And it's not like, I don't want to make this like, oh, it's the deepest thing ever, but like, 
genuinely, it was interesting that I was still fascinated and locked into what was going on. Might be different for everyone, but for me, I was locked in and I just kept seeing that. And it's been a long time since they have found, I will say, the perfect balance between the two. And I think some people will hate that. I think some people will hate that they didn't try to do a Godzilla minus one here, but that's not what this film was trying to do. This film was trying to give us a Saturday morning delight, and it absolutely delivered that on the UFC fight of the century. And that's what I wanted. Titans fighting, exploring from their perspective, their universe, and learning more about it. Now, the humans are clearly still in this movie. They have to be. And when they are in this movie... You know, they're not annoying. Uh, they have some funny moments. Dan Stevens specifically, like, steals the entire show. I, I love it. And I don't know about you guys. Like, I had this deja vu effect that, like, for some reason, I thought he was in Godzilla versus Kong. <laughs> but I, I guess he wasn't. So it, it, he's a great introduction to this. I actually hope that if we get more MonsterVerse movies, like, he's in it as well. But he's awesome. He plays, like, Ace Ventura in this universe for King Kong and all the Titans. But... The humans are very much just used for exposition, and that's okay. Like, I didn't really need them. They get you to understand a little bit more about what you're seeing, but they never halt the pacing all too much to get you to that next fight because they do cut back, and there's no this inner splicing story of where, well, these humans are here and these humans are there. No, they take their time, and they're like, no, all the humans are together doing this one thing, and then you have King Kong and Godzilla doing their shit as well. And, and that's all I cared about. Like, that's what I wanted to see. And I was really happy. And, you know, as I mentioned, King Kong is the main character in here. It leads to some epic battles. The Scar King, this brand new other ape, is awesome. At first, when he was introduced, I was like, he kind of looks like a little bitch. But they instantly show, like, why this monkey is a different fighter than Kong. Really like that. Satisfying the other Titan that they introduced with him, this ice one. Pretty damn cool. Godzilla obviously gets a little bit more of the sidetrack because in Godzilla vs. Kong, that was the more of the focus with Godzilla. And I think that was kind of a smart approach, specifically from Adam Wingard as a director. But don't get me wrong, as a Godzilla fan, also really satisfied with what they were able to deliver with him. Specifically the Omega, like, pink, like, charge up, like... Ooh, it's awesome. I, I think Adam Wingard really got to deliver exactly what he wanted to do. And I think he was able to take the reign a little bit more. And the fact that this was actually the lowest budgeted film in the MonsterVerse, I think sometimes the CGI can be a little bit told, specifically in water. Like, water effects look a little bit weird in this film. But, like, that's such a small nitpick for such an awesome time. I, I wish the film was a little bit longer. I like all the fight scenes. I think all the action is actually really creative. Overall, I was pretty impressed with The New Empire. I went into this movie going, it's probably going to be fun. And I walked out going, that was glorious. I can't wait to own it on 4K. And it's one of the few films this year where I said, I actually might pay to go see that again. And specifically with like time now, yeah, I, I actually might make time and make my wife go with me to see it as well. At my number one, it is Godzilla King of the Monsters. Now, personally for me, this is my favorite Godzilla film besides Godzilla Minus One. Um, I obviously have not seen every Godzilla film. I don't rewatch them all every single year, but I grew up with Toho and the show era and everything of that nature. And if the new empire was very much show era of Godzilla, Godzilla King of the Monsters is kind of trying to be that nice balance of show era, but as well as what Minus One was trying to do and what the original Godzilla was trying to do with making these monsters feel fearsome, horrific, terrifying, and also trying to give us a human story as well. Now, I will say right now, I do not think the human story is aged quite well in King of the Monsters. I think when I do go back to watch it, it is easily the weakest aspect of it all. But I do think out of all of the human stories out of any single film in the MonsterVerse, it is hands down the strongest. And while again, yes, it does do my one criticism, it does cut away. The thing that Daughtry as a director was able to do here was display Godzilla in all of his might as the king and bring to life so many other titans, Mothra, and of course, even Ghidorah. Who for me, Ghidorah was like always one of the most freakiest and scariest things back in the day. And they bring him to light in probably the most terrifying aspect as well. They dive deeper into Monarch and specifically all the different Titans and the universe of what Godzilla is. And I think since King of the Monsters came out, it's just only grown on me more. 
I think visually this is my favorite looking film in this franchise. I love what Daughtry was able to do and specifically like some of the pullouts in the rain. You see Godzilla like charging at Ghidorah and they're fighting. It, it's so satisfying. And it's the one movie in this MonsterVerse that I've continued to go back to time and time again and I consistently think of. It's the one that I remember even watching. I was like, this is one of hands down my favorite Godzilla films of all time. Like if you had shown me this as a kid, I would have been absolutely blown away from every single moment. It's the one that again tries to find that nice balance between the both and trying to find that nice balance for the fans itself. For me personally, as a fan, it did hit those moments. It hit exactly what I wanted it to do and it delivered probably the most epic fights in the entire MonsterVerse as well. People might criticism that it's a little bit too rainy and sometimes they can't understand what and see what they're going with, but I think visually it kind of adds to the entire horrific nature that nature is changing, the weather is changing, all these different effects are changing and these titans are making our home world our planet Earth, our home, our backyards, their battleground. And it, for me, it's just one of those things. They are recreating and in a way transforming the entire Earth back into what they want it to be. The fact that the whole landscape of this film can be transformed into that and these worlds and these arenas that they feel on a scaling battle feel so big and epic. It reminds me of what Gareth Edwards had done in the original Godzilla film. And while I had issues with that, the scaling of Godzilla, the scaling of these arenas of what they would fight for and what they would destroy is the same thing in King of the Monsters. And I love that they were able to do that, to show the destruction on an epic level and make every moment, while not Saturday morning cartoonish, like the last two I talked about from Adam Wingard, it's able to make like, oh, they're destroying this city. And that's actually like really terrifying because there's people living there where when I just saw New Empire, I saw the Scar King wrap a damn like his like little whip thing around a building, tear it in half and throw it. I had no thought in the back of my head that like there's probably like a ton of people in that building. For some reason, King of the Monsters delivers that and makes me think about that every moment. And I, I think for me, on a story level, it's one of the strongest aspects of this entire universe. And I am very happy that we have a film like this. And I'm very happy that we have the MonsterVerse in general. I love that the directors that they always get new kind of ideas and new looks. And I'm excited to see like if Adam Wingard comes back. But I actually kind of hope that it's a new visionary coming in next to take on this universe and take it on in their own light. And I like that we have different versions and any person who watches this and does a MonsterVerse ranking, I can almost tell you right now, your ranking is gonna be completely different than mine. And I think that's pretty cool. So make sure to leave your thoughts down below, hit that like and subscribe, and thank you so much for tuning in. If you want more thoughts on the new Empire, I do have a review up now. You can find that in the card above or below. And of course, guys, until next time, stay classy.